Welcome to another edition of Fully Baked. This month's edition is a go-to Christmas cookie with the Christmas right around the corner. We all get those. Your kid comes home and goes, oh, by the way, I forgot. Or you get a last minute invitation or you get somebody who says, oh yeah, I'm bringing two more people and you not sure you have enough desserts. Perfect thing. They're called Bryaniki, Russian spice cookies, gingerbread cookies, Russian, Ukrainian. Uh, same thing as sort of the German Pfeffernus. And they're a nice soft cookie using ingredients that most of us usually have in our kitchen, which makes it such a great thing for when it's a last minute deal. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our ingredients. And the first thing we're gonna do is sift our dry ingredients. Um, and let me tell you what we've got in these cookies. They are so good. It's three cups of flour, three teaspoons baking powder. Um, now for the spices, this is where uh, the cookie's pretty adaptable. You can use all of the spices, some of the spices, all the amount of the spices, less, more, whatever your personal tastes are. So it's gonna have cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, nutmeg, allspice. And then the only other things in here are salt, egg yolks, and butter, and honey. Like I said, things we most often have in our house, and if you're missing one or two of the spices, you just add a little more of another, or just leave it a little less spice, whatever makes uh, you happy as far as your palate goes. So we're gonna start with our three cups of flour. We're gonna do this like we always do. We're gonna go ahead in and use the scoop to fill our cup. And we're gonna go ahead and take our spatula, or in this case, our bowl scraper, bring it back to the handle, forward, one cup. We're gonna do the same thing two, two more times to get our three cups. And hopefully y'all don't make as much of a mess with flour as I always do. But that's how we know I baked. There's flour everywhere to be cleaned up. All right. Let's go ahead and do it again. And that's two cups of flour. And let's get the third. Scrape across. That's our three cups of flour. Let's put the flour out of the way. I'm going to put it over to the side because I need to refill my flour uh, out of my big bag of flour for the next time we need to use it. All right. Let's wash our hands real quick because I just had to touch the door. Anytime I touch the door, I want to wash my hands because the door is not a food safe surface. All right, let's get that out for there. Now let's just sift our flour down. This is a great recipe, like I said, it doesn't take very long, it's not very hard. It doesn't use a lot of dairy, and most of us have some spices and honey and eggs in the house almost always. So it is, like I said, a, a very quick, easy, very Christmassy flavor. Uh, these cookies are amazing with coffee after dinner or tea, <laughs> tea in the morning. All right, three teaspoons of baking powder. All right. one and then it's two and you can see that the baking powder has the most baking powders come with an edge so that you can level your spoon all right on to the next will be our spices now i have experimented i always add a little extra cardamom 
I find that the smell is far stronger than the actual flavor, uh, but that's a personal choice. You can do it as you wish. All right, so we're going to add our cardamom first. Now, I go a little over my half a teaspoon. So I just kind of make a heaping teaspoon instead of a flat teaspoon. Just so I can get a little more, almost to three quarters of a teaspoon instead of just your plain. And cardamom has such a strong scent that it's hard to tell Really, I'm actually going to do the cinnamon last because it makes the teaspoon really dirty. So we're going to go to next to our ginger, which is also a half teaspoon. And again, I, I don't necessarily level these. I like a higher spice flavor in these. So I tend to go ahead and roll with a little bit warmer spice but not a lot more because a lot more is going to make it too much especially with cloves and allspice you don't want to overdo it so i kind of level off my allspice and my cloves a little more so there's our cloves and everything is listed as a half a teaspoon to start um, so you don't have to worry too much about that and like i said you can use as many or as little spice like if all you have is nutmeg ginger and and cinnamon, you can make it with them. It's just not gonna be quite the same spice level. All right, let's put these up and then we'll add our cinnamon and our salt. Now it's an eighth of a teaspoon, which is about half that, half. Um, it's what we would call a pinch of salt. So we can do that how we do it. Let's get these spices going through first so we can push through anything that needs to have a little extra. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so we're gonna go about, we could do it, or I'm sorry, I was said a half of a half. It's half of a quarter for an eighth. So we're gonna do about a half of our half, give or take. It's, it's a pinch, so you don't have to be as exact, or you can weigh it out. Let's see. This over here. Then we need our cinnamon, which I left for last because it makes the spoon so dirty. wipe that off so that sitting out here it's not making a mess for us. That is all of our dry ingredients. Now it's calls for honey in this and as you know when honey sits in your cabinet sometimes it crystallizes. All you have to do is take the lid off if it's a jar or if it's all plastic you can put the whole thing in I'd still say to go ahead and take the lid off and you can microwave it for five to 10 seconds at a time to break up the crystallization and remelt your honey. It does, it's not that it's bad, it just crystallizes. So let's just give this a stir so everything is equally mixed. All right, now we are going to melt us some butter. Actually, I have the wrong bowl out for what I want to do. This is where we need our scale because they are asking us to melt butter based on weight. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to turn our scale on. And if you have a non-digital scale, you just put your container on it, hit bring it to zero. And then you can weigh out your three ounces of butter, which is generally a couple tablespoons. I want to say three, but I'm not positive. I always forget my weight here, or I shouldn't say three. 
three ounces should be just about a stick of butter, give or take. Each stick's about four ounces. So. So it's about seven tablespoons of your butter for the three ounces. So let's put the butter up. And let us get our scale out of the way. As you see, we clean as we go. If you clean as you go, you don't have as big a mess to clean up when you're done. And it most certainly makes it easier to stay organized and get everything done. All right, now let's get our melting bowl back out and put our butter in it. We're gonna go ahead and melt this in the microwave. I'm gonna start with about 40 seconds, see if it's melted. And if not, we'll add 20 more. That way we have our melted butter. Okay, now we're gonna need egg yolks. So now we have sifted. So we're gonna take our next bowl for our wet ingredients. And we're gonna get our egg yolks ready. Since I'm not using the egg whites for anything in particular, I'm going to go ahead and put them in that container that held the butter because I'm just going to actually give the egg whites to the dog when I'm done cooking, so it's not as big a deal. All right. And there's our other egg. Let us remove the trash. Check our butter. It needs literally about four seconds because there's only one or two little spots that aren't melted. So we're going to set these egg whites out of the way. All right, I'm going to grab our butter and we're going to measure out our honey. We need little containers for the honey. And we're gonna add something that's not listed. I know we've made things before. It's almost always I add some vanilla simply because I love vanilla and I think it helps bring out the spices. It's just not traditional to the cookie. Like I said, this is a traditional Christmas cookie for Ukrainians, for Russians, um, very similar, almost identical to the German. Uh, the real difference between this and the American one is it's much softer. It has no molasses. It's much less sweeter. It's not, it's used as a cookie, not a building block for things. And you often can find them, uh, the prepackaged ones especially, with jelly, let me grab a little spatula to get the rest of this out. Uh, Prepackaged with jam, some sort of jam or jelly in the center. Um, you can make the ones at home that way as well. Um, but mostly I've seen the prepackaged ones like that. And they're a great Christmas Eve, Christmas morning treat. I'm a little low on honey today. Not sure why I am so low on honey, but I'm going to make an adjustment on the fly because I'm a little out of honey. If you're a little low on honey and you're worried about sweetness, you can use um, an agave syrup. You can use a little bit of sugar. I tend to like things a little less sweet, so it's not really an issue. 
I am gonna add a dollop of sugar. I brought the sugar over because I thought I might have been a little low on honey. Um, literally forgot to grab it over the weekend. So we're just gonna add a touch of sugar, not very much. Because again, I prefer it a little less sweet and you do put a sweet, sweet glaze on top. So it's not going to be necessarily a bad thing. So I'm just gonna, I was short about a quarter cup of honey, which isn't much. So I'm essentially gonna do about an eighth of a cup of sugar because I don't want it to be very sweet. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it right in there with that so that we can make sure it gets beat up as well with this so that it mixes perfectly. Dump our melted butter in now that it's cooled a little. And now we're just going to beat this. Let's plug our beater in. And clean implements out of the way. All right, now we're just gonna beat this smooth. If you have all the honey, it won't take as long to get it smooth as if you've added a little bit of sugar. Now, if you're at home and you're baking, you don't uh, know what you can use as a substitution. You don't have the experience to know what to use as a substitution. Google is a great way to find out, oh no, I need milk, all I have is heavy cream. How to make the heavy cream substitute for milk. How to substitute monk fruit for sugar, which is not a one-for-one -one substitute. How to, um, if you need heavy cream and only have milk, how to make that. All those things are available on Google, so that if you find you don't have one little thing, you may be able to substitute it right at home without running out to get a, a whole other item. Uh, which happens, as you can see, you note in your head, oh, I need to grab the honey, and you didn't write it down, and poof, it's gone. All right, our next step, now that we've gotten this beaten, and you can see it's just that, now, if you use all honey or you use a buckwheat honey, um, you may have a slightly darker color and that's fine. Some honeys are lighter than others. So the next thing we're gonna do is mix with the dry ingredients. All right, and I'm gonna do about half of them so we don't get coated in flour and spices. Let's get this out of our way as well. So we're going to start, we're going to give it a little stir. It smells amazing. The smells of this cake, or this cookie rather, is just unbelievably yummy. And it is a hallmark of Ukrainian uh, Christmas cookies and cakes um, and Russian the dawn of time it's been honey spice cakes honey spiced cookies you know you look around you use what's available to you and these were and are the things that are used so let's get this mix now the one thing you may find if you're a little short on honey is your cookies are a little dry and because I had a lot less liquid, I'm gonna grab me a teeny weeny measure cup and add a little water if needed. The other thing you could do is make a little sugar syrup um, to accomplish the same thing with your sugar. And to make a sugar syrup, you just warm water and dissolve the sugar in it and then let it cool because you don't want to put anything hot in with the eggs. But we lost about a quarter cup of liquidy with this. So we want to make sure we add a little water to get the right consistency. And I may need more. And when I say a quarter, it, it's not that much. It sounds like a lot, but it's really only four tablespoons. Still a little 
dry. Let's add a little more water and give it a go. check it now so that I can show you what the dough looks like when it comes all the way together. I want to add maybe the slightest drop of water more. And that should do it once we get that mixed in. Now we have a thick dough that is damp and holds its shape. And I'll show it to you here in a second. Let me clear out the dough from in here. So when you pull the dough and you want to see it's together, it should hold its shape like this. So what we're going to do is make sure it holds all together and it's a cohesive dough. So I'm going to give it a mix in here with my hand a little bit just to make sure I've got all that flour incorporated. All right. So our next step will be to cover this and chill it for one hour. We just cover it, throw it in the fridge for an hour, and let that sit. And what that does, and the reason you want to chill it, is so that your cookies don't overly spread. Uh, if you've ever made sugar cookies or seen anybody make sugar cookies and the dough spread all over the place, it's that the butter in it is too warm. And since we've used melted butter mixed with the honey, it is a warmer mixture. So you want to cool it so that when you put your circles on your cookie sheet and you cook it, they will spread out and open as they cook, but they won't spread across your cookie sheet. So I'll see you in an hour when they're chilled. Okay, we're back. Our dough is chilled. So we're gonna move on and get our cookies ready to bake. So the first thing we're gonna do is set our oven to 350 to get it preheating. Get a cookie sheet with a silpat, sprayed or a piece of parchment. We're gonna use a cookie scoop and we're gonna put them with some space between them. I would say on this type of average cookie sheet, three across, four down, a dozen per, um, because you do they do naturally spread a little. I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little cooking spray on my cookie scoop to keep it from cook sticking. And then give it a dab with our paper towel so we don't have a wet cookie scoop. All right, so one scoop of dough. It will be stiff dough now that you have had it in the freezer, or the fridge rather, not the freezer. One flat scoop. I just want to give it a little push into the cookie scoop so you get a full size cookie. And you're looking for that. We'll go ahead and get our tray ready. 
So like I said before, these are your traditional Russian and Ukrainian Christmas cookies. But a little fun fact is that Russian Christmas, Ukrainian Christmas, they're not celebrated anymore on December 25th. Um, they were at one point when they celebrated it at the same time as the Catholics. Uh, but one of the stars, and I honestly can't remember who at the moment, uh, I want to say Peter, but I'm not a positive, uh, shifted it to January 6th, which is the Epiphany. And so Christmas for Russians and Ukrainians are celebrated January 6th. So you think to yourself, when does the Christmas tree go up? We put ours up after Thanksgiving here, which of course they don't have there. Um, and I put mine up after Thanksgiving. I'd put mine up before Thanksgiving if I could get away with it in this house. But we put it up at Thanksgiving and most of us take it down right around New Year's Day or shortly thereafter. Whereas the Russians and Ukrainians put their tree up New Year's Day and take it down after the epiphany. So it is a little bit different, which means around here, if I could get anybody to agree with me, I could leave my tree up through January 7th. I don't, partially because I know it annoys other people and partially because I don't really have time to deal with taking all the tree and the millions of Christmas things I put around my house out in the middle of January. Whereas I take Christmas, January, New Year's Day, where I have help, and I go ahead and take all my Christmas down and only leave out my winter decorations. So. This year I don't have classes in the January uh, semester, so maybe I will go ahead and leave it up since I'll have time to deal with it later. All right, that's one tray. We'll set that aside for when our oven is ready. Now you can set your timer to 50 minutes to get your oven to start preheating before you're ready for your cookies. Um, to come out and then have your cookies in for another 10 cookie dough in for another 10 minutes and have your oven ready probably by the time you're done your first go around here now if you don't have a cookie scoop you can use a, a tablespoon you can just roll a small ball uh, I honestly find cookie scoops to be the greatest thing in the world it just makes everything a little more uniform. It makes everything just a little bit easier. So they're just my preference, but you don't have to have them to make cookies that go round. And then after this, what we're gonna do once the cookies start going in is we're gonna put together the glaze. And once the cookies are coolish, mostly cooled, you paint the glaze on with a pastry brush and then let the glaze, the glaze harden. And once the glaze has hardened, you go ahead and pack up your cookies. So they get a nice uh, confectioner sugar glaze on them. And that also helps sweeten up the cookie since you're not using a lot of sugar or honey in it. So we're almost ready here. And I find these make generally in the neighborhood of two dozen cookies not really it's not exact it depends as I always say on how much your sugar how much your flour absorbs that day how humid it is uh, what altitude you're at there's a numerous things that you know get involved in that so let's get these cookies going we're almost at temperature over there These cook from 10 to 20 minutes. I find they are closer to the 20 minute mark. So I'm when we get started, I'm gonna start my timer at 15 minutes. And it looks like I'm gonna get about, I'm gonna get two smaller ones, so I'll get exactly about two dozen. And 
just as a side note, also even adding the water when you're do when you do it short of honey, such as I did, so that we can still get our cookies made. Your dough will be slightly stiffer than if you use all honey. The honey does allow a little bit of a softer dough, but it should still pop out of your cookie prep your cookie scoop and hold its shape like that. So I've got just about two dozen cookies. Um, technically it would probably be short one, but I just made two slightly smaller so that we can have an even amount. All right, as soon as this is ready, we will go ahead and get the glaze going or get the cookies in. Let's get started with our glaze while we're waiting. And it does, you can do this glaze ahead. You're just gonna wanna whisk it a little right before you use it so that it's smooth and ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is start our glaze. We're gonna get our powdered sugar, uh, also called icing sugar. All right. And let's get our measure cup. Now for this, we are going to need a half a cup of powdered sugar, one to two teaspoons of water. And as per usual, I add a touch of vanilla. So let's go ahead and sift our half a cup of powdered sugar. And I'm gonna add a little extra just because I like it a little sweeter um, with the cookie being less sweet. So wipe up the mess we've already made. And then you wanna sift it because you don't want lumpy glaze. Remember you can hit it with your hand, you can shake it. If you use a bowl that's slightly bigger, you tend to get less powdered sugar around and you can do the bowl. When it's this little bit of sugar, it's just easier, I think, to bang it like that or to shake it back and forth against your hand a little. Like I said, if you get a bowl that's slightly bigger than you need, you make a little bit less of a mess. You don't worry about the powdered sugar sort of getting everywhere, especially when you need to lift up your sifter for that last little bit. It doesn't shoot all over the house. Alright, now we're gonna get a little water. Like I said, I have these little teeny weeny one liquid cups that are a quarter cup, which is four tablespoons. Alright, let's get our first cookies in. And set this for 15. Alright, and so I'm gonna put two tablespoons of water in here. It'll tell you on these, the tablespoons, I'm sorry, the tablespoons, the cup. It'll also show you the ounces. And there are three teaspoons per tablespoon and four tablespoons per quarter cup. All right, so we're gonna get about a teaspoon of vanilla in here. So we, may, we won't need quite as much water to get a good glaze. And you don't wanna add all your water at once because then if it's too watery, you'll need to add more sugar. So if you add a little bit of water at a time and whisk, you'll be able to add the amount of water you want until you get the glaze consistency that you would like. So I'm gonna add oh, about a tablespoon and I'm gonna start whisking. Now, if you decide to add the vanilla, it's gonna look a little brownish when it first starts mi mixing, but the more you whisk, the whiter it gets. So you won't have to worry about it being discolored. I know they have clear vanilla um, that you can use and some people do. Um, you can add a bit of white whitener food coloring to whiten up icing if you want a pure, pure white. For the cookies like this, not a huge deal. All right, I definitely need a little more water. Go about another half a tablespoon. Because you're gonna be painting these on, so you don't want it 
super thick, but you don't want it super loose either. Now see, I think I got it looser than I really wanted it. All right, so when that happens, we just add, where's my, oh, there they are. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of powdered sugar. Now, because we're not sifting this in, you do have to mix it a little harder. Um, if you see big lumps in your powdered sugar there, either pick around them with your tablespoon or bring your sifter over and sift above the bowl. Now, if you don't add the vanilla, which again, isn't traditional to this, it'll be a little bit whiter. And like I said, for this cookie, it doesn't really matter. I do like a much thicker glaze than that. I'm gonna add a second tablespoon, which is about an eighth of a cup more powdered sugar. I, like I said, I like a little bit thicker glaze for this. So you want your glaze to be well mixed and you want it so you can paint it on, but so that it sort of clings and so that when you come across it, you can see that it moves, you can see swirls when you go so that you can paint that right on. You could even go a little bit thicker than this for painting on, but if you were say drizzling I prefer slightly thicker still, so I'm gonna go in just a little more. Not much or it'll be too thick. Give it a good whisk. And that's what I wanna see. It pours still and it streams still, but it's not watery. And so all I'm gonna do is literally set this aside and when our cookies come out and we put them on the rack we'll let them cool and once they're fully cool well not fully cool but once they're cool ish we'll get that icing on them and let the icing set before we pack them up all right I'll be back with you in about 10 minutes when the cookies come, the first set of cookies come out of the oven. Okay, we're about to take the cookies out and put the next batch in. And I'm gonna show you what these ones look like and that's with the substitution. So it'll be slightly different than the ones that don't have the substitution, which will look more like the pictures but they taste the same. They don't fall as much with the added ingredients. Let me get these ones in first. All right. And like I said, 15 minutes was about the norm for me for these cookies, so that is what we have. them up here while they give them a quick cool on the pan. You'll see that these stayed pretty domed with some cracks and you'll see when you have the full amount of honey that they will flatten out um, as the picture in the recipe listed below shows you a little more and just with a still crack a little but they'll be a little flatter. This gave it a little more lift, which is fine. They will taste the same, they cook the same. Um, the texture is just slightly different because of the difference between sugar and honey. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these out. They don't have to stay on the cookie pan as long. They are pretty hardy as far as movement. They don't fall apart regardless of which type of cookie you have. All right. This one here. Dump the crumbs off, set 
that over there to cool. All right, these are cooling and they will cool fairly quickly, at least enough to put on the um, icing. Now, because these are the taller cookies with the substitution, I'm giving them a little pat down so that the cookie itself is a little flatter on top and will hold the glaze a little better. Okay. Now what we're gonna do next is grab some wax paper. If you don't have wax paper, it doesn't matter. You can put down a cookie sheet underneath of it. You can put down tin foil, a piece of cardboard, but all you're doing is lining your counter or your table so that when you put the glaze on and the excess glaze comes off, you are not getting glaze all over your counter or all over your table. And so you wanna make sure that it covers your entire area so that when you put the glaze on, that it will drip on the paper and you can roll up the paper instead of wiping up the counter. And you can use the same for both set of cookies, either way. Let's put those out of the way. When it comes time for the glaze, when they cool a little bit more, I like them still a little warm because I want my glaze to melt a little. You just take your glaze, it'll have thickened up a little from sitting. You just give it a little whisk, bring it back to its state, and you're gonna use your brush, or you can spoon it over uh, with a teaspoon, and I'll show you both methods. Let me grab a little teaspoon. So you can take your pastry brush, dip it in, and go ahead and paint it over onto each cookie, like this. And you can control how even your coating is. Or if you don't have a pastry brush, you can take a teaspoon, just get a teaspoon of glaze and dribble it over. And then you can use the back of your spoon to push the glaze all over your cookie. I'm going to go ahead and use the pastry brush. I find it a little easier because I like my glaze a little thicker. The cookies will move a little. You can hold on to them while you paint them or chase them around with your fingers or with your paintbrush. I'm sorry, not paintbrush, pastry brush. Although if for barbecue we have, you can use perfectly clean food safe paint brushes. For pastry stuff, you usually want a pastry brush, and to be honest with you, now that I have silicone pastry brushes, I would not use any other kind. They're just so much easier to clean. Stuff doesn't stick to them as much. And I think I've showed you all before, but mine actually come apart so you can clean underneath them. Now you can wait till the cookies are a little cooler. I like them when it's still a little melty on the cookie. So it really soaks into the top of that cookie. And then you let those cool, like I said, and harden up for you. All right. Now I know that a lot of people that do baking videos would have stopped the video, ran down the street and got some honey, uh, did it another day. I think one of the things I find important with beginning baking especially is learning how to substitute, seeing that it things like that happen to everybody. And in this case, it's a fairly easy substitute. It, it does change the product slightly. Some substitutions don't. In this case, it won't make any difference as far as how good the cookie is, just a bit of a textural difference and a bit of a visual difference. Now, because I can tell you this is not the first time. I'm gonna go ahead and paint these. 
And after I do the second, I often, if I have leftover glaze, sometimes I will reglaze a little the cookies to get a little more on there. Sometimes I don't. Depends on whether I have leftover glaze. It depends on what kind of coverage I've gotten on them. And these are pretty good. And like I said, the reason I brush is so I can get full coverage on my cookies. When you use the spoon, you have to push it with the back of the spoon or you only kind of get a top glaze, not down the sides. And I'd really like to keep it going down the sides. All right, and the other added bonus if you are using wax paper or you're using tin foil or even saran wrap or a cookie tray, a sill pad underneath, is you can, before that gets hard, you can actually take that, since this is a clean surface, and take it and add some to your cookies. That way you don't waste as much glaze either. Now, if you're using cardboard or something like that's not food safe, then no, I would not recommend going ahead and using that icing. But in this case, it is a food safe substance, so you can go ahead and then not waste it. Now, I'm just sort of running the brush over it, but you can take your spatula, you can take your spoon, and sort of gather it closer. Be careful not to rip it or you're going to end up wiping I, the glaze all off of your counter anyway. And that would defeat the purpose of keeping your counter clean. And the wax paper does rip, I think, a little easily. And just give it a little extra. Not much, just a drop. All right, now we're gonna let those cool. Now we're gonna get our whisk so we can whisk this when the other cookies are ready. And I will come back to you when we are ready to, when they have cooled down and we can see what they look like and the other, the rest of the cookies are glazed. All right, we have, I finished glazing the other cookies and I had put these in the fridge to get the glaze to set. So this is what your finished product will look like, give or take, depending. And again, like I said, I get a little different texture and a little different shape. When I added a little sugar to compensate for the lack of honey. Uh, tastes the same, still soft, still spicy, still delicious, just a slightly different texture, slightly different taste with that little bit of sugar. So if yours look a little less puffed up or a little darker, that is the way they are supposed to be if you use all the honey rather than substitutes such as I had to do. And again, I'm telling you, these things happen. Like I happen to have a, a store not too far away, but it's not literally, you know, it's not feasible for everybody to run out in the middle of making your cookies, especially if you have already have stuff in the oven. So I wanted to make sure that since, as it turned out, I did not have enough honey, that y'all saw that you can make substitutions. And when you're not sure what could substitute or how to do it, you can hit a quick Google can I substitute or what can I substitute for? And it will tell you how to accomplish that. Well, like I said, these are the final product and they are delicious. And as you can see, not too difficult. And since they chill, uh, such as sugar cookies and shortbread do, you can rotate them through your fridge if you're making batch after batch of cookie, or you can be doing other things while that's chilling. We have a super exciting video for next month because it's gonna come out before New Year's. 
and a good New Year's party leaves you feeling a little hungover in the morning or even post Christmas um, for later dates or any kind of, you know, holiday party or birthday party where you might be a little hungover in the morning, we are making a baked hangover cure. It is sour cream coffee cake. It's yummy. It's mild. It settles your stomach. Tastes so good. And just eating a yummy, super yummy coffee cake makes you feel better. As always, I'd like to thank Haley and Mark and For the Fans Media for giving me a place to post the videos. You can find me at Sam Kissed on both Instagram and Twitter. If you have any questions, comments, requests, or you just want to show off what you made, just either send me a message or post it and we'll take a look. All the recipe will be in the link below. And I will see you all next month.